hi and welcome to the second part of the video on creating variables in R my name is Joshua from tag in the previous video we established a basic definition for variable as a housing for data and uh, then we talked about the types of variables that we have the numeric having two levels the uh, discrete and the continuous and we have the categorical also having two levels the nominal and ordinal so let's proceed to the practical section as we have said so this is uh, a typical RStudio platform the console is filled with the default statement so we still remember we press control and L to clear what we have in the console and then we'll bring in our editor pane new file arrow script or you press control plus shift plus n so we have it as untitled so the advantage of writing your code here is when you save it it becomes a script that you can use anytime and you can also share with people so this particular sign is used for commenting an arrow so i'm going to say variable creation variable creation in R so when I run the line of code it sees it as nothing but a comment so to organize this particular training we said we have numeric and then we have categorical so under numeric let's give an example let's create an example so one of the example i love to use is an example of a lecturer because i'm one i teach people uh, on r programming and some other things that people would love to know so let's take for instance that in my class i have uh, demographics of the age of people in my class because of uh, this uh, short video I'm going to use a simple example so I'll start by saying age so this is the variable name and then we said we have three types of assignment operator the left word the right word and the equal to so we would use the three of them in this uh, tutorial so we have the less than so you can hold the sheet and you press the list and then the hyphen button and then let's take for instance the first person's age is 12 so you run this line of code by pressing control and enter control enter so we could see here on the global environment that age is now recognized on the global environment so what it means is that if you print like we established that to print the result of the variable you use the print function if you print you impute the age as the only argument if you run this you are expecting to see 12 I hope that is clear so one other thing again that I need to stress is imagine like I said we have five people imagine I want to impute the age of the remaining four students so I said this person is 14 years old, 11, 18, an elderly person, and let's say someone is also old, 25. If I run this, look at what we happen. It tells me there is an unexpected error. So when creating variables, when storing data more than one into a variable, we in R, one of the ways to do this is to combine them together. And to combine them, we use the vector function. We combine them to a vector object. So we we'll still talk about vector when we got to the level of data types in R. But let's quickly talk about it. So all you need to do is to put the C. I told you a function has a bracket to open, and again it has a bracket to close. So this C stands for the vector function. You open the bracket here and you close it and you separate each of those observations with a comma so if you run this now there is a change there is an update on the global environment 
So here it tells us that this is a value. And then the name of the variable is age. Initially, in the previous video, we established that there are nothing but memory locations. If you look at the age, you would see that something pops out when I take my cursor to the age. It is the class is numeric and it is consuming 96 bytes on, your, on my system. So this is the class numeric and then it consuming 96 bytes. And what we have here, this particular square bracket is just to index the position. This is from position 1 to 5. So object in position 1 is 12. Object in position 2 is 14, 3, 11, 4, 18, and this 25. So that is that about that. So for instance, you are interested in object in position 3. What you will do is you will call that object with respect to the variable. Because the data is stored in the variable, so there is no way you can take it out without paying uh, respect to the variable storing it. So it is stored in a variable called age, and then I will use this square bracket. Anywhere you see square bracket and arrow, it's quite different from this parenthesis. Anywhere you see it, it means you are indexing. So if I put three, what I mean by three is position three, as we have inside this square bracket with this special operator. So if I run this, I'm expecting to see 11 alone. So imagine I said from position 3 and I use this special operator 3 range to 5. That is, I'm interested in objects in position 3 to 5. And then if I run this, I have just 11, 18, and 25. So that is that about indexing. So with this concept of indexing, we can also do something on the concept. We can bring in the concept of replacement. Or over or yeah let's talk about replacements so let's take for instance that a student in my class came to meet me and said sir i am not 11 years old i am more than that particular age my age is 16 and then i look at it okay you are the guy in position 3 so all i need to do is to say the guy in position 3 if i run this i am going to get 11 but i'm going to say no overwrite it and then I'm still going to use the less than assignment operator, which the shortcut is you hold alt and then you press the iPhone. You hold alt and then you press iPhone. It brings it out. And then instead of saying that the value is 11, you said, oh, the guy said he said it's 16. So if I run this, on the global environment, the value changes from 11 to 16. So that is that on the concept of indexing we will still talk extensively on this and the concept of replacing or overwriting so we have learned how to create a variable using the less and assignment operator and i said something initially i said one of the reasons why we are doing this is one to get our data organized so that our data will not just be exposed and it would be difficult for us to achieve our aim of organizing the data to get something meaningful out of it. So that is why we are doing this. And what this means is that what we have on this left hand side is the same thing as what we have on the right hand side. So anytime I want to see what I have on the right hand side, I just need to call age and then the result will be displayed. The data we have stored inside. So we also said we can create using the greater than assignment uh, operator. So it's just turning it upside down. So in this case of less than, the variable name was on the left hand and the data it is storing is on the right hand side. So in the case of greater than, the variable name will be on the right hand side and the data will be on the other side. So let's take for instance that we are dealing with um, a, a data that is also numeric but in this case, it is continuous. That is, it can take a float value. For the age, the age is discrete because it's not possible for somebody to be 12.2 years. It's either going to be 12, 13, you know, years old. So let's say now we want to do something about score. I give the student a test and I'm recording their score. They are five in number. 
and then I say score. So this is the variable name is going to be on the right hand side, and then I use greater than, and then I put this I thing. So here I will combine the score together again. So this guy got is possible. I'm just saying I'm going to use um, continuous. So this person got over 20, 10.3. The next person got 12. The next person is brilliant. He got everything. And then this person got 18. And this last person is not that brilliant. He has 5. So if I run this now, on the global environment, I have score consuming 96 bytes. The class is numeric ranging from 1 to 5, 10.2, 12, 20, 18, and 5. So we have been saying class numeric class is a function from the base package to tell us what particular type is that variable. So if I say class and then I say score as the argument that we have inside. So when you have a function, a function we have a bracket to open and a bracket to close. So whatever you write inside that bracket is called an argument. We will still see it when we are dealing with functions. So if I run this, it tells me that the class is numeric. The class is numeric. So that is that about how to create using um, the greater than assignment operator. So we have done this. Let's see an example of something that has to do with categorical. I will do a bit of it here because I'm still going to make a video where I would talk extensively on how to do with categorical variables in R. So let's take, for instance, we want to create the names of these people, the students I have in my class who have taken this test and who I have information about their age. So I'm not going to say names because on R, there is a function already called names. So it is going to be unprofessional of me to create another variable again to overwrite an existing function. I won't do that. So I can say st as a student and then I say names. So then I'm using the equal to. This is just very cheap and easy. And then so don't forget the vector function. So it is just to combine object data more than one into a single variable so when you do this now because it is character we have to quote it so let's say the first person is Ade I'm just going to use names with three letter words next is Ola like my name Ola Kumi and then the next is Olu the next is um, Ife love and the next which is the last one is um, let me just name Femi so if I run this now if you check the global environment we now have a variable called st under called names and the class of this variable is character so you could see this is consuming 376 bytes the class is character and then it has numbers from 1 to 5 Ade, Ola, Olu and uh, Ife with Femi. So this is how we can create variables in R and then it becomes very easy to see the output to just say print and then you say st underscore names st underscore names and then you run it. So, before I stop this particular part two, and then I will still, we will still uh, do like one more part to give us some bonus. So, we spoke about the cat function in the previous video that it helps to print continuous output. So, this is one of the advantage of Arrow Studio. Like I've been saying, you see, the moment I press cat, it suggests for me this cat is uh, something we use most times for uh you see it have it here google windows statistics etc so this is cat look at what it does concatenating the representation performs much less so it helps in having 
uh, continuous output. So for instance, I want to say the names of students, the names of students are, you know, this is just like a, a, a word, like a sentence. The name of students are, it is an incomplete sentence. So, you know, then there is a variable called st underscore names. So what I'm trying to do here is that the names of students are, it will print that one out as a word, and then this is a variable. It prints out informations we have inside that variable. So if I run this, look at what it does. The names of students are Ade, Ola, Olu, Ife, Femi. So I can say again that I can say their age. Their ages are, and then what are what is the variable storing age? I can just put age because this is a variable, you don't need to quote it. So if I run this, so it says the, their ages are 12, 14, 16, 18, 25. So I want to believe we now have a good understanding of how to create variable in R using the less than assignment operator, the greater than assignment operator, and the equal to assignment operator. And then, just briefly, we also talked about the concept of indexing in R. And that makes, that was when we talked about this particular square bracket. So anyway, you see square bracket in R programming, it means you are trying to index. The values here means one range to five, and on that note, I want to say a big thank you. Thank you for your time and thank you for loving uh, my video. I want to say God will bless you and increase you in knowledge. So keep watching this video and please subscribe and share with your colleagues. I hope to see you in the next video. Bye-bye.